thank you for being here. We're, we're so thankful uh, that God has blessed us with this opportunity. And I promise you, it's going to get better. Amen. Amen. It's going to yes. 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 get better. This too will pass, and people will be well and able to be in the house of God. And, uh, and just keep trusting and believing in the Lord. But we, would, we want to go to him in prayer. And maybe you have a special need tonight. Sister Paulette takes me about four churches. Uh, she's not feeling good, but uh, her great granddad is four months old and has COVID. She likes to pray for her. Also, let's remember the uh, Mark and uh, they all, some of y'all probably don't know them, but I've got my second cousin, uh, he's a second cousin, they lost her son to COVID out in Dallas, Texas. Uh, just, yesterday, I guess it was, or today. healing tonight, God. We claim it, Lord. God, that you just move in a special way among your people, God. Touch these needs tonight. Comfort those that have lost loved ones. Bless in a special way in this service. We'll give you all the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Praise God. Continue to worship as they sing tonight. Oh! 
<laughs> somebody else can tell me how to do this. So I just do it the way I can do it, the way I understand. I got me a few notes, and, and, and that's, what I, that's what I've always done, and so far it's worked out okay. But uh, I had jotted this down uh, about the, and this is not my title, but the, the whole miracle of feeding the 5,000. Sometimes we're content with just getting our bellies full. Right. Right. And he told them, all y'all was worried about seeing the miracle. You know, get it. You know, I, we left from the Japanese place Sunday. My belly was full of those that, and I wanted to go home back now. <laughs> A lot of times, you know, we, we come to church and we sing a song and we worship a little bit, we get our bellies full, and we get content. Oh, right. uh, but that's not what my sermon is about tonight. <laughs> the title of my sermon tonight is The Remnant of a Miracle. All right. You know, when whenever uh, whenever they got through feeding everybody, Jesus told them to pick up the fragments. Yes, he did. He didn't want nothing lost. And I can only imagine, Brother Zach, that uh, if the fish and the bread was good, they put them, the leftovers in the boat with them. So somewhere right close to where they was at, when they were getting uh -huh. all beside themselves, was the remnant right. of a miracle right there. Right. It would get so... I, I don't know how... I don't know how it would feel. You know, it's kind of like oh, people talking about something, you know, something bad happened. Well, if that was me, I do. I don't know how it feel if I just witnessed two fish right. and five loaves mm -hmm. feeding all this crowd of people, and I've got remnants of that left with me, right. and I get out on the ocean or on the sea or wherever it's at, big old lake, whatever it was. And a storm comes up, and I get all distraught. Mm -hmm. right. When I've got the remnants right. of a miracle right there, right there with me. How many? I mean, how many times? I've, I've told this story before. <coughs> when Ben and I were working together, and and, and if if you've ever <coughs> worked for yourself, and you felt like you was, it was Sister Lindsay, it was. It was it was my responsibility to make sure everything was good. And, and, and we didn't have nothing. I didn't have a job to go to. We were going to finish up a job. Well, that job I'm finishing, Brother Ben was a remnant of a miracle of a job he'd done sent me. Right. And I asked Brother Ben, I said, son, do you ever worry? You know, he, he pretty much knew that I didn't have anything lined up to go to. And he looked at me just as solemn as he could and made me feel like I was about yay high. Do you ever worry that I don't have something else lined up? And I guess maybe that was the beginning of this sermon. He knew God had, he said, hadn't he took care of us this far? I said, well, yeah. <laughs> you know, that's something the daddy's supposed to be telling the son, not the son. Telling the daddy. But there was a remnant. I was going to pick up parts to finish the remnant of a miracle God had already performed. Right. I, I was talking with uh, Aunt Faye's son, Michael Lennon, here a couple months ago. And uh, he was talking about this guy. His name was Ron. Not white, but white. Like white hurt. Right. He's. If you get a chance to look at some of his work, it's a, he, he's really, he's made a lot of stuff in here that people try to say didn't happen. He's found evidence of it. And you know, whenever uh, I get the Elijah's and Elisha's confused, the one that's hiding in the cave, running from Jezebel, he was just a very short distance from where Moses led the children of Israel. He's in a cave right close to the remnant of another miracle. Right. right. 
right there. Right there. How many times has God come through for you? Right. And then three days later, on the next day, and the devil throws something else at you, and like, oh God, what am I going to do now? <laughs> <laughs> All I can say is, oh, me, I've done it. I've been there. When there's a remnant of a miracle, I, I was talking to a, your aunt the other day about when Zach, not this Zach, the other Zach, got hit by the train. I said, that's three from our church that's been hit by a train. The reason he survived being hit by a train, there's some remnants of a miracle still hanging around here. Right. Not only survived, he walked away from it. Right. He didn't have a big yeah. hole in his head, but he's okay. Yeah. I texted him and checked on him. He said, I thought I'd been hit by a train. I don't know what my <laughs> Another scripture. 1 Samuel 17th chapter, 54 verse. <coughs> said, and David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem. And he put his armor in his tent. <coughs> now we're going to skip over 1 Samuel 21st chapter. We have a saying around the house um, we kind of go about talk about coincidence. 21st chapter and the 8th verse says, And David said to Ahimelech, And is there not here under thine hand spear or sword? For I have neither brought my sword nor my weapons with me because the king's business required haste. And the priest said, The sword of Goliath, the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah, behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If thou wilt take that, take it, for there is none, no other save that here. David said, there's none like that. Give it to me. Right. David <coughs> showed up. <coughs> he was hungry. He was thirsty. And he didn't have a weapon. And it just so happened mm -hmm. there's a remnant right. of a miracle yes. that God performed for David I don't know how it wound up because that wasn't David's tent there. I tried to do a little research and they couldn't, nobody could, none of my research could tell me how the sword got right. from where David put it to where David needed it. All I know is it was that. Well, it was that there's a remnant of a miracle, something that David needed to take care yes. of the problem at hand. I don't know how many times, and I, I'm sure I'll repeat myself over and over, but I don't know how many times I have been there. I, I went to a house last week, just half a mile from home, and an uh, elderly lady I've I done work for for years, and some, some of my former customers Fifty more, more. They don't want nobody else in their house. And uh, I had a pretty long. It's almost five o'clock. I had a pretty long day. Started out early, early that morning. And Miss Ann called me. And she said, "I know you've been you trying to quit. <coughs> Do you know anybody you can get here?" And I said, well, "What?" I asked her what her problem was, and she told me. I said, "I'm about to pull up to my house now. If you'll give me time to get in my truck, I'll come that way." And I'm not saying I was a remnant of a miracle, but when I got there, it was a very simple fix. And uh, she said, I, I, I don't know what to say. She said, I'm worried about this for two days. And she said, I finally said, God, you just, and it's Miss Ann Sheffield. Her husband was a, a Methodist preacher for years and a uh, super nice Christian lady. Went to school with Mother Day and, and uh, she said, I, I finally just said, earlier that day, she said, I finally just said, God, I, 
I don't know what to do. She said, I'm just, going, I'm just giving it to you. And uh, she called me and just happened so. I was right close. And was able to go take care of a, a, a very small problem. And we got to talking and, and I've never left there without <coughs> us sharing something in the scripture or something that's happened you know, with us and everything. And, and she held her arm. She said, I, got, I just got chill bumps just thinking about how God so often I think we 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 don't think enough of ourselves that God will actually take care of us. Right. You know, it's a lot easier if uh, if sister sister back there is sick, it's a lot easier for me to pray for her and believe God will heal her than it is for me to pray for me. Because I know me. Right. I know all the deep dark secrets of me. <laughs> so to think that God. Is this, and, and that's why. This, she just. It done something to me. When she said. You know, I, I just turned it over to God. Why not? Right. You know. I, I, I hadn't seen the time yet. That he's failed. Right. I've seen a few times. That I wish he'd hurry up. <laughs> You know, I, I'm just being honest. I've heard people say, well, you know, you ain't supposed to question. I hadn't read that no word of word. Even Jesus himself said, why is it, you know, why have I got to do this? But any time, any time you find yourself going through something and needing God's help, check around. Look for that remnant. Right Somewhere close by, there's going to be something that God has done for you that you can count on. And it's weird. Um, my my work hours are crazy, so I don't ever. I, I may be out traveling the roads when y'all all dead asleep. That's a bad way to put it. The work I do. <laughs> so I, I come in another night and I. Uh, I have to kind of unwind, then I can go back to sleep. And I'm strong with that. I find this, uh, this saying, and it's kind of strange that I, I don't guess it should be kind of strange because it goes along with the message I've been working on. It said, remember your history with God. It's evidence that you can trust Him right. with your future. That's it. Somewhere in your darkest night, if you look around, that's going to be a remnant of a miracle yes. where God has come through. Yes. Like I said, I hadn't found any word in the word where it said we ain't supposed to ask God to lie. But we've got to hold on to, to the fact, knowing that somewhere there's a miracle. And it's waiting for us right. to uncover it. Mm -hmm. You know, all, all, all it takes. That positive attitude. You know, if you get around people with, with negative, uh, I, I don't think none of my old friends would be even seeing this sermon, so they, they don't matter. But there's like, some of them I had to quit hanging around because it's all this, everyone's so negative. And you feed on that negative, and Brother Richie gets to the point where, well, you're in the same boat. Right. I need somebody to lift me up. I need somebody with positive yeah. attitude. It'll help you know, if I'm down in the dump, they can say, hey, yeah. you remember? That's remember right. what you're doing? Mm -hmm. You know, the song, he's an on time God, you know, he stepped in and just made a highway for across that road. <coughs> a food rip <coughs> on dry ground. Right. And we turn out to be like the Israelites. They saw, you know, they walked through on dry ground and they said, well, we just brought us out here, don't let us die. You know, I'm, I'm preaching to the choir tonight. If we had a choir. <laughs> but, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's sad for me to think all the times I have almost given up when that remnant right. was right there. Right there. Just, just right there. That's, 
look for that ring. Bible talks about how David had to encourage himself. Right. I believe part of that encouragement was him recalling past victories. You know, against the giant, against you know, uh, even when he faced the giant, he recalled how he flew the bear and the lion. So, so you know, sometimes we have to we have to look back, right? what God has already done for us. I believe it's the book of Mark that gives the account of that story uh, when, he, when he calmed the sea for them and the storm for them. Then there's one verse there that says they considered not the miracle of the love because of the hardness of their heart. See, sometimes we, we, we find ourselves in in trouble and in, in a bad fix and, and, and Wonder what we're gonna do when all, all when all the time the word of God and because of what He's done for us in the past has already told us what's right. 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 We can we we can we can look around and see miracles that He's already done. Prayers He's already answered, yes. and know that if He if He done it before, He'll do it again. Right. Why? Because He's the same yesterday. Today and forever, he don't change. Praise God. And I'm thankful for that. Let's all stand. <coughs> Pray much one for another. Uh, Sister Christy, the choice one. <laughs> yeah, you can turn it off. But <laughs> the, she texts and says the baby is sick. The um, little father that you have. I think he's eight weeks old now. Mm -hmm. His name's Peyton. I told him that we would have a prayer. Let's, let's go ahead and have a prayer for that baby. God, we know you're able to touch and get to heal that baby. <coughs> Lord, with your healing power, your healing virtue, let it flow tonight, God. Not only with that baby, God, for all those that are out sick tonight, God, we speak healing in the name of Jesus. God, go with each one, leading God, by your spirit, keep us in your will. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you.